What's going on guys? Steve Ramos, <clears throat> your personal trainer to go to. And today I'm going to be helping you guys. And this is not a video that's requested. This is one that I wanted to do to get out of the way, but to also help instruct you guys on how to properly use this. However, this video is going to be why we should not be foam rolling your lower back, all right? So before we head down to the floor, let me give you the uh, anatomy aspect of things. The things that you guys may find boring, but it helps me facilitate and makes things easier to explain to you guys. And because um, my phone is at a good level, I can turn around and show you guys specific things, all right? great way to mobilize either your spine or to mobilize any soft tissue if you use it right but you have to stop right where your thoracic spine ends which is right down here all right about midway all right so let me explain to you guys so from the back of your head to kind of right where your shoulders align, that right there is your cervical vertebrae, all right? So this aspect, whenever you're talking about, you shouldn't even be passing a foam roller through here, all right? So from the top of your shoulders to your mid back, which is right in the middle, that's the thoracic vertebrae. That is a great spot that you can pass your foam roller. Now, from your mid back down, you have your five, uh, final five lumbar vertebrae, and um, that's the part where I'm talking about that you should not be foam rolling. Again, um, even if this is kind of hard to see, you'll be able to see what specific part I'm talking about. But, um, if I can, I'll grab the phone. If I can show you guys, right, but from the front view, well, side view. So what you guys shouldn't be foam rolling is down here, right where we all naturally have that curve going on, all right? That's the final five lumbar vertebrae that you should not be passing your, uh, your foam roller. The reason why is if you look at me or just look at yourself from, from, from the mid back up, what do we have? We have our rib cage, right? Which our rib cage helps support any anterior force that is coming through. Meaning, while I'm passing the foam roller on my upper back, right? So let's stop with the fancy terms. If I'm foam rolling my upper back, any force that is being pushed anteriorly, which means from the back, our rib cage can kind of push back against that. Now, if you guys start foam rolling the lower back, there is no support up here. Yeah, okay, oh, your abs, but that's not as supportive as your rib cage. All right, so now we're gonna go down to the floor and I'm gonna show you guys exactly kind of how it looks and the key term of listening to your body. Your body knows what is normal, what you can do, what you should do, what you should not do, all right? Okay, so we're down on the floor and with our buddy, the foam roller, right? So what I was saying that you can do is pass it up here, which is totally fine. Nothing's wrong here. I'm small, so I don't really have a too large of a back or long of a back. So up here, this is totally fine. Now, the majority of us are um, very uh, front rounded. So we're really like, our shoulders are really rounded. You know, we have round shoulders. So uh, from sitting at a desk or anything. So we're normally, you know, we like sit like this. Now, the good thing about foam rolling your upper back is we're, we actually get that extension that we want, all right, to, you know, fix our posture. So that is a great thing. Now, what I was talking about 
of listening to your body is once you scoot this little bad boy underneath the lower back, the first thing you should feel is your abs um, tightening. Your body and shaking. I'm currently shaking right now. Your, that's your body telling you don't let go. You don't lean back on this thing or, or whatever you're doing. So listen to that. Um, for whatever reason, if you feel that your lower back is tight or is stiff or anything like that, then your best bet is to go check other places, meaning um, try foam rolling other places like your hips or um, your quadratus or any, any other place that you can with, with a ball or with the foam roller. So, um, you know, try, try, try your hip or your, your glutes or anything like that. Things that are acceptable to be foam rolling because if you don't know what is causing the stiffness or the, the, the lower back pain or anything like that um, and you have any case of any problem of your lower back, then you're just going to be making things worse. Okay, and like I said, I mean, you can also just try this at home. And if you're someone that has been foam rolling your lower back, stop now. All right, um, at the end of the day, you're gonna do whatever you want to do, but I'm giving you guys everything you need to understand as to why you should not be foam rolling your lower back. I mean, your body even doesn't even want to let you. I mean, this is extremely uncomfortable for me to even try to get in this position, so I'm gonna try to get into it. Uh, and it hurts just doing this and my abs are so I I tried not letting them take over But the first thing they're doing is trying to cinch me back up right so Like I said, you don't have that Force to act against the force that's trying to act on your lower back in your upper back No problem keep from rolling it because your rib cage helps support that anterior push that the foam roller is giving you. You don't have no support right after the mid back. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, not too confusing and just stop foam rolling your lower back guys. Let's have common sense. And if someone in the gym told you you should foam roll your lower back, tell them they should foam roll their life and uh, roll away from the gym. All right, so Steven Ramos, your personal trainer to go to and uh, comment, like, share, and subscribe.